Good morning, beautiful people. Marie Alessi here. I just want to send you so much love on this beautiful Easter Monday. Uh, the weather here in Sydney is just absolutely gorgeous. We had 26 degrees Celsius yesterday, uh, which is really, really beautiful for autumn or fall, like some of you might call it. And I thought it is such a perfect time to talk about this topic because it has come up a lot lately, not just in our group, um, not just uh, in our family, but everywhere I look. People who have lost someone in their family, this topic of parting the ashes or parting with the ashes comes up quite frequently. And unfortunately, I must say it has also caused to divide some families and has caused for jealousy for family dramas for some really ugly disputes and that caused me to come live with you and share my very personal take on it. Rob's wish was to be cremated if something was ever to happen to him and for his ashes to go back into the ocean. He was an Aquarius, he loved the water. He loved being in or near the water whenever we had the chance to it. Um, so he used to love diving and fishing and spear fishing and snorkeling and surfing most of all, you know, he just really loved spending as much time near the ocean. And that was his wish. He said, if I was to go, I would like to have my ashes go back to the ocean. And when it came close to Rob's first anniversary of passing I shared that wish with the boys because somewhere in my head I had this thought that this would be beautiful to do this for the one year anniversary when I shared it Jed my little one our little one was quite adamant about not being ready about that not being ready for that not being ready to part with his dad's ashes and I totally understood that and I instantly knew that for Rob it wouldn't make any difference when that would happen or if it's even ever going to happen ever if that would mean that his son would suffer and um, so I made the decision and I made the promise to both my boys I said I promise you with all my heart that nothing will ever happen with those ashes until all three of us are ready I knew that this would have to be a family decision I knew instinctively that I could trust the perfect timing that Rob would show us, that my boys would show me. What I wasn't ready for, that happened way earlier than the one year anniversary, was that Rob's parents wanted to have some of Rob's ashes. And I have to admit, the very first moment I heard that, I felt gut-wrenched. I just felt, uh, how could I possibly part Rob's ashes? It literally felt to me like I was cutting him up which couldn't be further from the truth. And it took me a while to be able to come to terms with that and to be able to learn that. But one thing didn't take me long, and that was to say yes to his parents because I knew it was their son I'm talking about here. I knew this is not just my husband. He's not just Flynn and Jet's dad. He's first and foremost their son. And like Chet said so beautifully the other night, Mum, they had him for a lot, so much longer than we we did. And I just love it when kids come up with so much wisdom because it's true. Without Rob's parents, he wouldn't have been here. He was the biggest gift they could have ever given me. So how can I say no? Not just would it be disrespectful, but it would have been... What's the word for that? Quite simply, for the lack of better words, it would have been mean to say no to them. I just could not say no to them, although I have to admit it truly hurt me in the first moment to part the ashes. I really thought that I couldn't do it. And then I did, and it still felt wrong for quite some time, not giving it to them, but parting the ashes, if that makes sense. There's a big difference, you know. And after a while, I realized that it is actually a really beautiful and symbolic way of going about it and a symbolic um, perspective to look at it from that point of view to say, you know, um, everybody loved Rob 
everybody did. I have, uh, I've even said that to his parents yesterday when we came over for Easter Sunday. I said, I have never met a person in my life that didn't like or love Rob as soon as they met him. And um, so for me, that thought of having a little bit of Rob's ashes um, with his parents, with us, and then we started scattering some of his ashes at our most beautiful um, places where we've been together. So I took some to Coffs Harbour because that's where we spent a lot of time as a family, a lot of family holidays. It's about seven hours north from us and really used to love going up there in summer together. So I took a tiny little bit of his ashes and we scattered them at the second anniversary at the beach in Coffs Harbour where we used to go. And uh, I also took a little bit of his ashes and scattered it near the rock where Rob and I exchanged our rings because Rob and I had a shaman, na um, sorry, I say naming ceremony because we had naming ceremonies for the boys. Um, we had a shaman wedding ceremony and in the uh, shaman traditional wedding ceremony, there is no ring exchange included. There is um, hand fasting. So we decided to exchange our rings, just the two of us together about three months before our actual wedding day and we chose my dad's 60th birthday for that beautiful ceremony because my dad had passed when I was 20 so we felt it was just the most beautiful way of honoring his 60th birthday and do it on that day just the two of us together at this beautiful rock overhanging Coochie Beach because we used to live at Coochie when we first met. So I took some of the ashes there and uh, every time when I started taking a little bit of his ashes and scattering them. I also took a little bit of his ashes and um, got some really lovely jewelry made, uh, a very pale pink love heart for his mom, where half of the heart has got the ashes in it and also a pale green teardrop for his dad with half of the teardrop with Rob's ashes in them. So I believe there are some really, really beautiful things that you can do and it's almost like that he's everywhere. He's everywhere where there used to be really beautiful memories and uh, I shouldn't even say used to be, where there are really beautiful memories that involve him. And um, it really it really just touches me so deeply that every time I see his mom, she's wearing that beautiful love heart. She's wearing Rob's ashes close to her heart and it really is exactly what I wanted for her. So I believe before you get into any family dispute, any um, any emotions around parting the ashes that are anything else but beautiful and touching your heart, I want you to think about it in a way as in your loved one being everywhere, your loved one being shared, his love being shared, his memories being shared and trust me, there will usually always be more than one person who wants to hold on to these memories and what a gift it is when you can when you can do that. It might take you some time to come to terms with it. I totally understand that. It really took me a while to yeah, to warm up to that idea to part the ashes. And then of course the next topic is parting from the ashes when it is time to let go of them. When is it time to let go of them? Do you need to let go of them even I believe that this is the most personal question in someone's passing, in someone's healing journey that there could be. Trust your heart, trust whatever you had talked about if you had the chance to talk about it. I was lucky that we had the chance to talk about it and I knew that's what Rob wanted. Yet a few weeks ago, my little one said to me when it came to night time, and night time when I say good night, we always have the most uh, beautiful conversations, actually. And he said to me, Mom, you know about Dad's ashes? And I said, yeah. He said, I think, uh, I think we need to let go of them. And it really hit me completely unexpected. And I said, wow, okay. So where's that coming from? You know, what, what made you think that? And he said, I feel if we don't do it, he might be stuck between here and there. And I thought this was so profound for a 12-year-old to come up with something like that and to think about something like that. And then, of course, I had a chat to Flynn about it as well, how he would feel about letting go of that ashes. And 
that then presented me for the first time in almost four years with the question, am I even ready? And I wasn't really sure at first. I was really not sure if I was ready to do that yet. I didn't see it coming. I wasn't prepared for the question. Um, it literally came out of nowhere when I was saying goodbye. So I really had to think about whether I was ready to let go. And I thought maybe our wedding anniversary would be a beautiful way to do that because we got married on that beach where I decided that it would be beautiful to let go of his ashes. And um, to cut a long story short, we, we talked about it for quite some time over the weeks that were leading up to the wedding anniversary. And then quite spontaneously on the day, we said, maybe we wait for a little bit longer. But on the day, I said, how would you feel if we go down to the beach and spread some of Dad's ashes and then leave some for the passing anniversary and see if some of his family want to come along or all of his family want to come along. So that's what we did very spontaneously. We went down to the beach, the three of us together, and we scattered some of the ashes in the ocean, a, a very big part of it. And we left a little part behind as a symbolic, you know, spreading that on his passing anniversary, which is coming up in June. So I wanted to share this with you because obviously that's a very personal story for us, what we did and how I went through the idea of parting his ashes and then parting with his ashes from his ashes. Um, and I'm thinking maybe that can give you some ideas of how to think or feel about it or what to decide that you do with it, but also trusting your divine timing, your timing when you feel ready for it to do whatever it is that you have decided. And one thing that really touched me deeply, and I have to thank Jessie Listell for that. Jessie Listell came for an interview in my group not too long ago. So if you want to go into Loving Love After Loss and check in the guide section where I have the upswell grief interviews, you will find the interview with Jessie Listell. And she has recently shared a video where she got... Uh, her mom's ashes made into a diamond and I had no idea that that was possible and I thought it was such a beautiful way of honoring her mom and she was uh, you know showing the ring she was unwrapping it in front of the camera and it really touched me because it was such a raw moment for her and she said now I'm, we I'm wearing my mom wherever I go and that to me was really beautiful it was really really touching and I thought maybe that gives you some ideas as well I know that I've talked to one of my clients about that the other day and she didn't know about it either and she said that is a really beautiful way to think about it and to maybe make a little pendant or earrings out of her loved one's ashes for herself or for her daughter or both of them so think about the ways that you would like to honor your loved one's ashes and trust your inner timing trust your divine timing trust that your higher self, your deepest, innest knows when is the right time to do it and what the right thing is to do with those ashes. But one thing I can ask you, and that is no matter how unique your story is, please do not let this become a reason for a dispute in your family. Because that is the last thing your loved one would want to happen with their ashes. I'm sending you so much love. This is Marie signing off. Bye for now.